trying to log to stream to YouTube and Facebook in the same time. <clears throat> well, that worked, seems to be. Okay, maybe we can wait for a couple of minutes more. Yes, we do that. No, I also share it on my page. Yeah. And anybody else, please share it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. So we all share it on our, when all of us share it on our Facebook pages, uh, we get more people interesting. Yes, you can just share it from the group. Yes. And then out to your page. Today is also with text. Uh huh. Okay, we welcome Dr. Hans Petter and Dr. Kari for the meeting tonight. The word is yours. Welcome everybody and on Facebook, on YouTube, or here on Zoom. And it's a special, a very special day. Uh, it's the, a unique day that the living God that came up on earth as Jesus that he died for our sins. And the only one he just asked for that we invite him into our hearts and, and then we become his holy temple. And this is some of the things that we shall share about today. Uh, we Yesterday we were speaking, Jesus was in, had the Lord's Supper and he also, uh, he went to Gethsemane for prayer and he was arrested. And then they early up in the morning today. And as we said yesterday, that Jesus was crucified before the high Sabbath in the Easter week or the Passover week. Some people saying Easter week. But that's the occult uh, a feast that they had in the Roman Empire before Christ. So it's about the Passover to go from the old covenant over to the new covenant. And Jesus, they pushed him to different places. They went into the King Herod. They were by the governor. Pontius Pilatus from the Roman Empire, and no one of them really could find any blame on Jesus. And 
because Jesus had done anything wrong. It was only a threat for the religious system in Israel that time. It was he, Jesus was a big threat because if Jesus had been lifted up as a king, then and take over as a king as in the human thinking, then they the high priest, the priest, all the whatever thing around the temple, they have lost the power, the income, the famous things. And we have to look at the same today when you get persecuted by the big churches around you, perhaps you are coming, starting to preach the real gospel like we do in the Springs Revival and that we can't gain anything in our own and everything is for free. You just accept it by faith. And then you know that the, the, the system around us, they will feel that we are threatening their position because suddenly... Because like me, when people ask me to carry the Bible, I said, I carry my Bible myself. It's my sword. I don't let anyone carry my Bible. I like to carry my own language. And so it's about to, to not to lift your higher up than other people and use people as slaves. And that's also today that you find the slavery in the church, that people become slaves under big pastors, big prophets, big bishops. That has misunderstood everything about servantship. But today about Jesus, what really terrible happened. So after back and forward and then it was a rule that the people, they could choose that Pontius Pilatus, he released some prisoner. And he was thinking that he could come out of the troubles by asking people, who shall I release? Shall I release Jesus out of this this?" Uh, to be honest, they, were, they do the same in America and other nations. The president, they give uh, the prisoners mercy uh, so they can release from prison. But the crowd, they were screaming, crucified him, crucified him, killed him. And then they said something that was really dangerous for them. They said, let his blood coming up on our head and our children's head and our grandchildren. So they called a curse upon their own heads because it was innocent blood that was shared out that day. And they asked for a, uh, a murder to be released. And after that, uh, the, the, the killing of the Jews increased. And therefore also, Jesus said something special before this. And he said also that the, the Holy Jerusalem temple, everything should be thrown down and no stone should be left upon one stone. And then he also said, but the real temple, his temple, should be rebuilt in three days. So Jesus spoke a lot about this day that he should be crucified. And before he got crucified, perhaps some of you have seen the movie Passion of Christ. It's a terrible movie to look at. But it's also a powerful movie to see how Jesus all the time, they lashed him more than 40 times with the whips. 
And normally it's enough with 40 to kill. They use some great hooks. They, they hit him in the back and throw out. So big pieces of the meat of the, the flesh, flesh went out of the body. And also they make a crown of thorn and yeah. Carl is expert on that one. Yeah, you, you, you know, he, yeah. they make a, a crown uh, with the long thorn and, and just put it on his head. Not easily, they, they push it on the head. And that horn is a picture. Uh, it's, it's a red inside, you know, inside the, the head too. Uh, and it was very painful. And that means that Jesus, he took all the bad thinking uh, people are doing uh, upon himself and he carried it to the cross. So all are, you know, people are uh, forced to things or by all bad thinking, he took that on the cross. It was, was in, in the crown of Jesus. And you can also read about the God's full armor, about the arrow with fire that we had the helmet and, and the breath to, to protect us. And when we are born again, the, the devil always attack us with all kinds of evil thinking. And sometimes we we catch it. We we didn't manage to resist it. And don't condemn yourself. Just push it away, as is, the Lord is saying, protect you. Take the devil's arrows away. So even if you get hurt and they come into you and you start thinking about it, take it and throw it away because Jesus carried also that thoughts on the cross. And... And when I see in the in the movie Passion of Christ, you can see the spirit of death. They will make it very nice. The spirit of death, the evil, was walking around and high, uh, pushing up the people. And it's normally people don't get so crazy like the people in Jerusalem that day. They really... The demons attacked all the people in a terrible way. So everyone would get almost brainwashed by the demons that day because they didn't have received Jesus as a Messiah. They didn't have received the good message. They have resisted it. And normally it was about... 500 to 800 people that was following Jesus when he was traveling around, always there. It's a big, like almost today, you have these uh, music, popular music groups. You have a group of people following them. Or the soccer player, the football player, you have a group of people following them everywhere they are going. And also, Jesus had a group of people that were following him all the time, wherever he was. He, they were following. But the day he got crucified, no one, all of them ran away. So Jesus, he was there alone. And it has to be terrible for Jesus even to see that his closest friends disappear. And, and then they also that when, before he was taken up to the cross, uh, he, they, it was, they had to carry, he has to carry his own cross. And I had a very good story about, or testimony about the Passion of Christ movie. It was when the Passion of Christ came on the movie. Uh, Mab and I, we had some meetings in our capital every Thursday in the, in, a, in the basement of a hotel. 
And the group there, the group uh, were growing fast. And we were a group of people. We went out to the cinema before the, in the daytime and we were praying around the building. We anointed all the doors with oil. And I think some people have been looking at us. They have said, this people is crazy. But we were praying for the people that came into the cinema. And under the cinema, under the movie was moving on, almost in the end, a man ran out. And he ran down to the police station and confess what he has been doing in Ovocatu some years before. He had put a bomb on a mosque and blow it off. And he confessed it because he, when he saw Jesus hanging on the cross and he saw the grace and mercy of Jesus, that he was even crying for the bad guys. He was shouting out, please forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. And it's, it's so you can see that the, the gospel set people free. They bring the people into conviction and they see its grace and mercy. They confess and give their life to Jesus. So he become a good Christian. He was a terrible terrorist, but become a good Christian because of this movie. But also very interesting that when we came out of the movie and we were standing there and inviting people for a, a dinner meeting to have inviting people to come if they have some questions uh, about the movie, questions about Jesus, they'd be inviting them to a pizzeria or pizza to have a meal and to discuss and could ask questions. And we were giving this invitation out to all people that came out. And suddenly, a very well-known pastor in our capital, uh, even uh, he was a Pentecostal leader of the Pentecostal movement, and he came up to me, pointing on my nose, and he said, you, we shall take you down. And then you see, I think some of you have experienced this, that the former revival will always attack the new revival. And the same with Jesus. When he was coming as a Messiah and with the really new gospel, preaching mercy and grace and forgiveness, love, the people lost the control over the people. They couldn't threaten the people anymore. And that's, you were speaking about yesterday also, when Jesus shared the Lord's Supper, he said, this is the new covenant. The blood of Jesus is the new covenant. And do you have something more from that, Corinne? No, not that. Uh, the, 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 he, he clothes, I, I have. You know, they took off his clothes and crucified Jesus. And the soldier, they take, um, they took his clothes and share it among them. And the, the clothes, they rip apart and they, they each one get a, a piece. That's a picture of different churches who have been uh, up uh, in many, many years, you know, the Pentecost or the Lutheran, you know, all these kind of churches. So it's one pieces, you know, they, they get one piece each. It was no unity. It was, they got one piece each. But the last train, it's, uh, it was made in one piece from, from the top to the bottom. And, uh, and they didn't put that in part. Uh, and one soldier got that. It was the last one. And this is the large church. You know, the, the, the things who was uh, made in one part, he, it's cover all other clothes. So, you know, this is a picture of the last church. It will uh, be in one piece and it will cover all 
other, you know, the Lutheran, the, the Pentecostal, you know, it will cover everything. And it will, uh, it, it's uh, made from one piece from the uh, top to, to the bottom. Like uh, in, uh, you know, in the temple when Jesus died, the, the curtain get, uh, uh, get in, in two pieces from the top to the bottom. That means it's come from the Lord. The Lord is ruling the, the last church on earth. And it will be unity. Unity with all other who are united with Jesus. Those who are not united with Jesus, we can't bring uni united to. Because it's impossible. Yes, so if a church is based on man-made doctrines, tradition. And we have had that experience already in Kenya that some a bishop is saying, oh, this is like, and, and saying that uh, Springs Revival uh, has nothing to do and all these things. And, and we don't care about it because we are one in Christ. If people don't want, if they are bishop or archbishop or pastors, if they are not in one with Jesus, they are one with their own things, you can't be united with them. We can, the bride is united in Jesus. And that's also that Jesus has to carry his own cross up to the, where the place they should crucify him. And so it was a very heavy burden. And people all the way by the road, it was a long way to carry. And, you know, he has already been persecuted so much. And he almost had no blood uh, left in the body because he had been bleeding from so many places. And he also was walking with this torn into the head, moving and having heavy pain. And, and he was walking and still forgave people. He was there suffering in terrible pain, people yelling, oh, great, terrible man. And there he was walking between them, carry their sin up on the cross. And still people are persecuting, judging, saying bad things about Jesus, Christianity, but they don't understand that they are already forgiven for what they have been doing and what they are doing. Because that I was also, I hated Christianity. I was thinking the Christian was the most stupid things. They was only foolish, begging for money all the time, on TV, radio, everywhere. They were standing on the in the streets. And they were tricking people. Yeah, and they you couldn't trust them in business. They were the most tricky people in business. So I said I didn't like these Christian people. But when I met Jesus, even when I, I went to college and high school, we were playing heavy devil music, we were cursing the, and making fun of Jesus and all the all all things about Christianity. Still, Jesus, when I met him face to face, he smiled because I was already forgiven. It was only for me to receive his forgiveness that already was done 2,000 years ago on the cross. So it's so powerful. It's the message. It's not the cross that is powerful, but it's the message what's happening on the cross that is powerful. And when you came up there, the nail him is terrible to put the terrible nails through your hands. And this is one of the worst way of, of persecuting and kill people is to crucify. It. It's so painful. Yeah, you die slowly, slowly. Yes. And you are hanging in the hands and it's terrible pain. And then you try to push up with your feet to lift you up. And then you have all the pain in the body and the feet. So it's a 
terrible way to, to kill people. And so many Christians still today get persecuted, beaten up, and killed. And they have a special reward in heaven as a martyr. But Jesus, when they come up there, he was hanging on the cross together with the two bandits. Something strange happened. You know, one, he was cursing Jesus. If your God is there, you can come and take you down and walk out of the, of the cross. But then you had the other, he said, have mercy with me. Remember you, me, when you go to paradise today. But there is a very, very big picture. You know, it was a ba uh, two banditos. And that's a picture of uh, two banditos in our life. And that's our flesh and our soul. You know, our flesh is screaming against God. It doesn't want ha to have anything to, to do with God. But our soul, we are like the other, you know, uh, robber. You, you know, we, we really want to go with God. So it's a very big picture that uh, happened on the cross. And it's also fascinating that it's a big discussion about how could this one person be born again without to be baptized with water or born again with, uh, with, with, um, with the spirit and water. But Jesus, he is the living water. The Bible, the gospel of Jesus is the living water. And he got a revelation in Jesus. When he saw Jesus, he saw God. And he repented and said, please, I want you. I want you in my heart. He didn't repent it from all the things he had been doing. He didn't say, oh, please forgive me that I killed that. I raped that. I was stealing there. He didn't confess all these things. He said, remember me when you go home. And Jesus said also, today you shall go with me to paradise. And we were reading uh, or speaking another program here by the Passover that Jesus went down in the bosom of earth. So Jesus didn't go and the rubber, he didn't go together with Jesus to heaven. They went down to the bosom. And some people is saying that, that Jesus didn't die spiritual on the, on the cross. He had to die spiritual in hell or in the bosom with the bad parts. And then, but... It's nothing about that because a spirit never die. No, we live forever. So Jesus, he got the victory on the cross because he said it's fulfilled. He didn't say that I have to go down and fix something with the demons and then it's finished. No, Jesus went up on the cross in the victorial way, because he already had the victory. Because the victory in, in, the, in the spirit, there is no time. So Jesus, he went on the cross as a, in a victorial way. And therefore, he also had such a, a love and kindness. He knew that he bought you and me free from all the devil's burdens. And he had to be crucified on the cross. The cross was very important because in the Garden of Eve, that they, uh, they took the sin down from the tree. So, uh, so Jesus becomes sin for us and he was nailed back on the tree. 
And it's also written that everyone that is hanging on the tree is cursed. So this has brought all the curses that's up on us back on the trees that was given because Jesus put some curse when they were throwing out of the garden of eat that the lady should give birth with heavy pain, that you sh we should suffer and be really struggling to have food by farming. It was different curses. And these curses brought Jesus back on the tree. And I believe, even because it's written that even that curse that the lady shall give birth with a heavy pain is broken. It's up to every lady to take it by faith. And I said, that is broken. I, I, I can't test it with my <laughs> faith. I can't test it with my faith. But if I have been lady, I have tested it. I said, Lord, I want to test this, that this, this, this curse is broken. Because I love to test God's promises. <clears throat> and check out and, and find out, yes, it's working. <coughs> And so it's about very, Jesus brought every back. He reopened all everything that was from the beginning. The agape love came back on earth. And it's also very special because he also saying that Mary was there and John, they were there. And the other, they were not there. But then suddenly he said, this is your mother to marry uh, to, to John. and to Mary said this is your son because Mary she she lost her son Jesus so it's about there you can see the understanding what Jesus is saying whoever giving away leaving your mother your father your even your kids if you are leaving them in the sake of the gospel or all other things shall be given to back to you in this time as we live here and for eternity. And we have seen there that mom and I, we have to leave our families. I had to leave my my mother and father, I have to leave my brother. And my mom you have to leave have to, Yeah, yeah. Because they don't, didn't want to speak to, with us anymore because uh, we become Christian. And they saw us as a crazy. And, and we refused to follow them. We want to follow Jesus. So, you know, in Norway, they have birthday party, you know, they're all kind of party. And they call this a party here. Uh, that of that day, can you come? And then we'll uh, look at the schedule. Oh, it, it's a church. No, we go to church. So, you know, we didn't go to these parties. So so they got very, very angry. And then they said, you, you are so stupid. And they, it went many years. And then the, they called back and said, we are going to have a party. Which day it fits you. So, you know, then I become the head not the tail. The tail is following. The head is who decide. So I could decide which day it fits me. And they all the other have to follow that. So, you know, that's how you become head and not the tail. You don't follow what in this world. You stand on, put Jesus first all the time and he will regard you because of you, you did that. But that was very frustrated that when we has to go away from our families, then the Lord gave us new families. Yeah. We got I we got a lot of fathers and mothers in the spirits, good spiritual yeah. mothers and fathers that was encouraging us, helping us. When we had done, we had a lot of yeah. troubles. It, like you. We have always something, but then we had someone to go and speak with. We had many places all around the globe that we had very good spiritual parents. We are working together with them also to preach the gospel. 
And so we got a new family, worldwide family. And therefore I also, when, when some people write to me with some troubles or something, not, not calling, but writing, because my phone is calling all the time. And that's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you write, I pray for you. And if I see it, I call you, or we can make appointment to speak. Because I remember in the first year walking with Jesus, how important to have good spiritual parents to speak that understand what's happening because they have already been there and they can help you through. Mm. And, and just be, and Jesus died on the cross. It was a, the, the, the sun become totally dark. It was three hours totally dark. Some people say the whole day. No, it was three hours totally dark. And it was earthquake. earthquake. People, they was quite sure, totally scared from, they quite sure remember what they was crying out and screaming, let his blood come up on us. Suddenly, some hours later, the sun get dark, the, the earth shaking, and the temple, get the, the curtain in temple get split from top to bottom, and God went out. The presence of God went out of the temple and went to heaven. God was no longer in Jerusalem. And then they took a spear into his side uh, and, and uh, put it inside and blood and water come out. Remember when God created Adam, he took a ribbon from his side and created Eve. So, you know, they put a spear in Jesus' side and blood uh, and water come out. And then his bride start to to uh, to get birth and that's the christianity so that was the beginning of the birth of the bride yeah and it also written that the bone should not be broken but because they saw the blood and the water came out they didn't break the bones they were doing that on the two robbers they broke their bones, but Jesus was taken down and they put him in the cave, in the grave for another man, a businessman that had a cave. People that time, they they made, they bought, bought them a, a place. So when they died, everything was ready. That's my place. And he gave his place. And then you had the, the high Sabbath. And then he, Jesus was three days and three nights in the bosom. His body was in, in the grave, but his spirit and his soul were in the bosom of the earth. And that's also very interesting to see what Jesus was doing there. It's written that he capture all the demons and lock them into cells. So when I read books about people that has been in hell and get persecuted by demons, it cannot be true. The demons is locked up. The, the first person who will be thrown into hell is the Antichrist and his uh, his uh, prophet. They are the first one who, who will be thrown into hell. In the, well, in the end. In the end. But today, there is no demons persecute anyone in the bosom of earth, in the kingdom of death. The demons is locked up. If someone tell you that they have been in hell, and see demons that have persecuted Christians or other people or what else, mass murder, 
It cannot be true because it's not written. They are locked up. Uh, and also, you, you know, the devil will never, ever have his own kingdom. Never. So the devil will never have a hell that he will persecute people yeah, yeah, that he will for rule, eternity. Yeah, he will not rule in hell. No, he will be persecuted. He will burn like together with all everyone that had not received Jesus. So all this fake teaching, just forget it. The fall of the Bible. It's a lot of books written. It's about I was in hell, I was there, and all these kinds of things. But just forget it. Read the Bible. And Jesus, he kept and locked up all the demons. And after three days, he was risen. And he stood up, and that had to be Saturday evening by sunset. Then Sunday was starting by sunset. So Jesus, just after, so it has to be Saturday night, Jesus was risen from that because he was already risen when Martha, they came to the grave. The grave was empty. In the, they went early in the morning and the grave was already empty. And to understand the three days, because you have today and then tomorrow, Wednesday, and no, today the high Sabbath started. So tomorrow they were not allowed to do anything. And they needed to prepare all the liquid, all the balsams, all the perfume, the, the spices. They should prepare to have on Jesus' body. That was one day to, to buy that on the marketplace and they should make it. So that they were, they were doing that on Friday. And then Friday night, you had the Sabbath again, the normal Sabbath. So they couldn't go to the grave on Saturday or from Friday night because it was Sabbath. They, couldn't, they were not allowed to move. So they went very early. They used the Friday to prepare everything. They had to rest on Saturday and early in the morning on Sunday, they ran very early and said to prepare Jesus. And when they came there, the grave was empty. Jesus was risen. And it's very thinking about and then there was an angel was there, and they what are looking, the grave is empty, he's not there. And later also they said, Don't touch me. Uh, I cannot, I have not yet been in heaven and given over the blood sacrifice. They couldn't touch him before he had given the blood sacrifice in heaven. Because if someone had touched it by human, it could be unclean. So Jesus, he is so holy, and the Lord is so merciful. And some people saying to me that God is evil because he put people in hell or in the lake of fire. I like that better. No, I said, God, my loving father, he is so merciful. He is so love and kindly, kind to protect the holiness that he can't allow a little, little things of evil, unclean things come into heaven. It's only through the blood of Jesus, the cleansing by the blood of Jesus, and that you be born again, that can come into heaven. And also he gave all people the free will, if they want to go with him or not. And uh, he cried for everyone that doesn't want to go with him. And, uh, and you know, because he wants a bride who love him, not because of his, uh, he can do everything, but because of him, just him. You know, every person wants to be loved, not because they are rich or whatever they have. They want to be loved because of them. And Jesus, he, he made us in his image. 
So he, he also wants uh, people to, to love him just because of him. And I will, I will perhaps some of you that listen or see this program later, I will push you a little. If you are following Jesus, if you are going to church, if you are praying, worshiping, because you are scared to go into the lake of fire, then you are not born again. Because then you are doing it because of fear. And fear is the devil that is pushing you with fear. And he is ruling you with fear. He, you are his slave under his fear. And you will miss it. It's only when we love Jesus, the first commandment, to love God, to love Jesus with everything we have. And in the love, in the agape love, there is no fear. It's only, I just want to follow you because I love you. I just, not because he gave us a lot of things, but because I love you so much. And the same with man. I could do everything for man because I love her so much. I can forgive everything, whatever, if she had been doing some crazy stuff, I have to forgive her. I am so happy that I have a good wife that don't do all these crazy things that many <laughs> wives is doing. But whatever she has been doing, I have forgiven her with big love because I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And if you do that, you are born again. Why? When you take the water baptism, this is the last point. That is very important. When you take the water baptism, you get crucified with Christ. You get buried with Christ and you get resurrected with Jesus Christ. Everything is new. And when you and the flesh get crucified, is killed. Don't take the flesh up again and please it. Let the old flesh be buried, killed. Never ever take it up again. It will always try to, the devil will always try to trick you and give you back this old stinky flesh, but refuse it. Remember, you are a new creation in Jesus. We are one in Christ. And this is the gospel we shall share with people, not about the cross, but what's happened on the cross. To lay down by the cross today and pray religious prayer will not bring you to heaven. But it's only by the brother of Jesus to receive Jesus, to honor Jesus, and live faithful to Jesus and trust him in everything that bring you into heaven. The cross cannot carry you, but the gospel, the living water about the cross was happened there, about the blood. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have got some new view, some new information about the, or spiritual revelation about what's really happening and what's also happened after the cross and that today when you are born again, when you have received Jesus without any payment and you have taken the water baptism, the flesh, the devil, nothing wrong can touch you. Your biggest enemy is not people, it's not demons, it's no, yourself. It's not the devil either. No, he's a, he's a do little dog. He is scared if you understand how big Jesus is in you, that you are the temple of the living God. The Trinity is living inside you. You are ruling with Christ. You are sitting in heaven together with, with Jesus and ruling. God bless you God so bless. much.